Oh no, it's too embarrassing. What if it's painful? Oh no, I'm far too nervous about that. These are just some of the reasons why women tell me they haven't yet booked their cervical smear or their cervical screening. So in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you why it is actually really important to consider getting this done, some tips and tricks to help you feel a bit more relaxed about it, and an explanation as to what actually the smear is and what happens when you come to get it done. So why should you even think about getting cervical screening done? Well, cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer in women worldwide, and getting this cervical screening done is a way to help prevent cervical cancer. So it sounds pretty important. And that's because almost all cases of cervical cancer are actually caused by a virus, something called HPV or human papilloma virus. This is the most common virus that we see in the reproductive tract. So most people will have HPV virus at some point, in fact, sometimes repeatedly. And most of the time, nine times out of 10, your body's actually really good at getting rid of this virus, just like it could a cold virus. But in some cases it can't. And in some cases, when this remains chronic, so it's long-term, this can lead to invasive cervical cancer. In England, the NHS cervical screening program helps prevent seven out of 10 cervical cancers, but three out of 10 people do not take up the invitation to come forward and have this cervical screening done. So if they did, many more people could be prevented from getting cervical cancer. And that's why this is really important. So what actually is a cervix and where is it? It's important that we actually know this stuff. So I'll try and draw you. I'm not an artist, but I'll do my best. Okay, so let's imagine this is your hips. This is the uh, outside of your vagina, which we call the vulva. These are the thighs. And this is your vaginal canal. Now at the top of your vaginal canal is where we get the entrance to the womb, which leads to the fallopian tubes, the ovaries, the other ovary, the other fallopian tube. And this area here, where the top of the vagina meets the bottom of your womb is the cervix. So now you know where it is. So who actually gets invited for cervical screening? Well, in England, it's anyone between the ages of 25 and 64, and depending on whereabouts you live and how old you are, routinely that's either three years or every five years. And we talk about women, but actually it's anyone with a cervix. So it may be trans men, it might be intersex, or it might be people who are non-binary. So if you have a cervix, then you should be invited. And actually also people wonder if they're not necessarily having penetrative sex, whether or not they still need to come for their smears. But actually, if you're having any sort of genital contact with somebody else, then you still could be at risk of catching HPV. So it's still a good idea to go for your cervical smear. There was some controversy recently about whether or not it was acceptable that the age started at 25 because in some very rare instances, women younger than 25 can actually get cervical cancer. But what studies have shown is that the changes due to HPV are really common in younger women, but almost always just resolved by themselves. And that if we did start screening these younger women, it didn't actually change or reduce the amount of deaths. So the, the consensus is to start at 25, you usually can book in six months before your 25th birthday. So what happens when you actually have the cervical screening done? Well, you can book it either at your GP, a sexual health clinic, and there are some specialist centers if you've suffered with any sexual trauma in the past. So don't be put off by that. And then when you book it for the day, usually it's a female nurse who carries out the smear test. And if you're nervous, do let them know because they can help you. They can make you feel more relaxed. They can think about ways, bring someone with you if you want to. They can hold your hand whilst it's been done. Ask the nurse if it's all right, if you kind of watch YouTube on your phone or play a game on your phone. So you can be distracted to help you feel relaxed because actually for the nurse, it's much easier if you can try and be relaxed. I know it's easier said than done, but just do remember to breathe as well because when you're relaxed, it's quicker and easier. So what happens then is the nurse will ask you to get undressed uh, behind the curtain. And if you can wear a loose fitting skirt, you can usually keep that on. And then we're gonna ask you to lay down on the bed, bring your feet up towards your bottom and drop your knees to the side if you're able to do that. And often we'll give you then just a little piece of extra tissue to make you feel slightly less naked that we can cover you with. And then we use a, a lubricated speculum that looks like this. And this is inserted inside the vagina and then we can just open it up so we can try and see the cervix through the vaginal canal. And then we use this soft brush that goes inside here and we take some cells by twisting it round and get some cells from the cervix. Now this brush itself looks a bit mean and spiky, doesn't it? But actually it's not, it's really soft. So when we think about it being painful, I mean, it's slightly uncomfortable. 
I'm not gonna lie, but it isn't painful. And the key thing is, every time I go and have it done, I can't believe how quick it is. I think, oh God, I was worried about this. And actually it's over and done with by in like a minute. So that's a key thing. Often people worry about it a lot and actually it's much better than they actually anticipated. But I think key thing is, do speak to the nurse or whoever's doing the smear to let them know that you're feeling anxious. Remember, you can bring someone with you, hold someone's hand, have something to distract you. Okay, so what about your results? Let's have a look. So, if you've got no HPV found, then you go back to routine screening every three to five years. If you've got HPV found but no cell changes, then we check again in one year's time to see if that HPV has cleared by itself. If you have got HPV and cell changes found, then you'll be referred on to something called colposcopy, where they'll take a biopsy of the, the, the cells within your uh, cervix to have a closer look. But this does not mean that you've got cervical cancer, so don't panic. Okay, I just want to cover off a few more things. HPV vaccination. You may have heard of this. It's delivered in the UK to older children before they could have caught HPV is the plan because it's brilliant. It prevents 90% of HPV um, viruses that could go on to cause cervical cancer. Actually it also prevents genital warts, so that's an added bonus. Um, NHS at the moment is trialing um, self-smear, so you may be able to do your own smear at home and send it off in the post. About one in six people end up having to go ahead for cervical screening because they've got some changes. But it may be something that's really worthwhile when that comes in the future. And also just remember, whether you've had your cervical screening or not, if you've got some symptoms that are worrying you, like pain or bleeding after sex, then please do get checked out anyway. It's probably nothing to worry about, but always good to make sure you do get checked out. Okay, so I said at the beginning some of the reasons why people don't come and book their cervical screening. They're embarrassed. And I get that, I understand that. But we've seen everything, every sort of vagina, vulva, pubic hair, and we really, really don't care. What we care about is that you're safe and well and healthy. So we're not embarrassed if that helps you, okay? People worry about it being painful. It is slightly uncomfortable, but the more you can relax, the less painful it is. So try and think about that. And it shouldn't be painful, it should be very quick and simple, just slightly uncomfortable. And people worry they've had bad experiences before. So remember, if you've had kind of struggled with sexual trauma, things like that, then there may be special clinics you can book into. And I'll, I'll leave a link in my description for that. So hopefully I've been able to convince you that on the balance of kind of the reasons you should go ahead and book your cervical screening versus the kind of reasons why you might not, hopefully you'll see that it's a really worthwhile thing to do. And I think once you've done it, you'll think, oh, why did I worry about it so much? It really wasn't too much of a big deal. So please, when you finish watching this, go ahead and book your cervical screening if you've been invited and I really hope you won't regret it. Thanks so much for watching. And if you're still not sure you would like some more information, then I'd recommend you have a look at the CDC website. There's loads of videos on there to watch. There's also some podcasts to listen to, some graphics and even some written print material for you to have a look at or share with others for more info. And please don't forget to like, subscribe and turn the notification bell on so you can be informed when I've got more videos coming up.